All right. So, uh, All right. Hey, I'm sorry if you're hearing a bunch of crap from my end. My, uh, I'm in my truck right now. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. So, uh, awesome. do we want to talk about subjectivity versus objectivity first? Just to clear that up? Sure. Defining uh, I, rules I, is a good start. I, yeah. So, um, so for what I understand about objectivity is that it comes from a, a unbiased place in the sense that you can still make an objective opinion. It's just that it has to have information pertaining and accurate information pertaining to the source in question. Uh, correct. Yes. That's on, on the nose. For example, like if you say a Coke can is red, you would be objectively correct because everybody perceives red as, you know, the exact same color. Yeah. For, like, like when, when someone says, like, Ruby is objectively bad, there are a number of uh, evidence to support that, such as um, animation errors, uh, Editing errors. Things like that. Like, there's a shit ton of, like, transitional problems in the first three volumes. It's not so bad in two and three, but in one, it is very self-evident that they did not know how to edit. Oh, yeah, and also, this is, this is also sort of counts for volume seven, because there was oh, a certain very. scene um, in episode two, I believe, of volume seven, where Blake's coat reappears and then disappears. Oh, in yeah. One of the shots. That reminds me, let me pull up a clip. Yo, this was in Volume 7. Like, this was, like, one of the biggest animation errors I've seen out of Rooster Teeth. Let me see if I can find it. So, what I was going to say about um, objectivity versus subjectivity is that I've noticed that... I've noticed that... Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, away, away from the microphone. Away, away from the microphone. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What the fuck Yeah, I I guess his mic fuck. Oh my God! It happened again. You might want to mute yourself, buddy. Yeah, I I just mute. I'm just gonna mute him for now. Yeah, yeah, do that, do that. Tell me when he starts talking to unmute him. Okay, I just muted him as well. Yeah, I muted him too. I'm not hearing that shit again. I'm sorry. I thought for a second. Okay, he muted himself. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that... So, um, what I was saying was is how uh, what I notice about a lot of people is that they tend to get the, the the definition of objectivity wrong, in the sense that they mean it to be they replace the word objectivity with factual. And that, like, like if right. someone's like if someone said, "Hey." The Star Wars sequel, specifically The Rise of Skywalker, was bad. That it was objectively a bad movie because of pacing and retcons and such from the last movie, The Last Jedi. They would be correct in that statement. I mean, honestly, calling anything objectively bad in general, like you, you need some evidence to back that up. You can't just say it all willy nilly. That's what a lot of people get wrong. Exactly. You need to provide evidence for th such claims. Yeah, yeah, it's not just a pretentious, oh, th this thing is objectively terrible, and if you disagree with me, you're wrong. That, yeah, exactly. That's, you need to provide evidence. And stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking childish it's to do it that way. In a lot of ways. Like, it's a judgment call made based on a set of criteria in tandem yeah. with both subjective and objective things. Like, the objective things, like horrible things that detriment the show and the story that it tells or just general elements of it, general enjoyment while the subject, oh yeah, that <laughs> one, that one. Okay. He found it. Um, Success. but the other thing is that with subjective, it's like preferences where, okay, I don't like how they did this. I don't like how this was, how this sounded or the way that they showed it. Like, again, that's just out exactly. of preference. And to separate the two is insanely important, which is what Mahler mm -hmm. really heads hits to head on. When it came to, I think, one of his older videos that he talked about, just wanting to separate the two so that it's easier to discuss. There's an example in the actual show of this very concept where, like, Weiss believes that, like, all faunists are just, you know, a bunch of douchebags who steal and, you know, fuck shit up. And, like, Blake has to, like, like, Weiss thinks she's objective in that statement, but, like, Weiss has to, you know, show her subjectivity by, like, you know, proving how wrong she is. Yeah, uh, that's... That's that's a bit of a fucking stretch there. I mean, well, yeah, I guess. Like, I'm just saying. Um, but what I also noticed is how in volume two, she completely uh, 
the whole racism of uh, Weiss was completely removed from Volume Two. Yeah, it's just almost it gone. disappeared. Because they wanted to rush Weiss's character development, at least in my opinion. Like I'm, I'll be subjective here and say it's my opinion, but like, did the writers plan for anything? Probably not. I think I think they probably planned it as they went along and just came up with stuff as they went. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. 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 Because, because because it had it had the show been planned from like episode one or from the series creation from all the way back in the trailers. Um, I remember back then in the red trailer. The supposed Grim, the Beowulfs, look completely different from how it ended up in the show. That they did. Yeah. Well, Indeed. the explanation that they had in World of Remnant, which got retconned later, uh, yeah. was, was that th- those were like young, younger Grim that ha- that uh, had been alive too long, and so they had not developed those uh, mm. the bon- bony structures, which immediately gets retconned in uh, volumes three and four when we see Grim materializing out of the ground immediately with uh, with full armor. Yeah. Well, well, that was Salem making the Grim like. Well, with, and the dra- and the drag and the wyvern, I believe it's called yeah. the wyvern. Yeah, the yeah. dragon thing that that like dropped that dropped pu- puddles of Grim that just immediately got got uh, out of the ground. Are already fully formed with uh, you know their, their skeletal shit on the outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I will mention how like in volumes one and two, or at least well, those are the ones I watched in preparation of this. Like when Grim die, they don't disappear. Like that's not a thing until later into the series. They Same actually thing with- do dust a few times, but they don't always dust. It's weird. But it's not a consistent thing. Same thing with aura breaking when somebody gets like we see Jean have you know facial wounds when Carmen is beating him up. Mm-hmm. Like we don't see like his aura breaking before him. So like that doesn't. In fact, he has aura after the fact and protects Carden from the grim with it. So it doesn't like that's another inconsistency. Yeah, as, as when it comes to aura, it's always been the very big thing whether or not it's consistent or not, and also. So whether or not aura is passive or needs to be, and that's something that wasn't really cleared up throughout the show, especially with Volume Five. They said that aura needs to be active, whereas in the World of Remnant episode, they said it was uh, passive. Yeah, they didn't know how to write their own definitions. I think because it easily could have been yeah. solved. Go ahead, Elder. I was going to say the thing with retcons is that they make a show unwatchable because, like, you have to like constantly switch what knowledge you need to know for this particular part of the show, and it's annoying. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to quote Mahler in saying that one of these two things don't like each other, and now they're having an argument about it. That's ex- that's <laughs> exactly what he said in his Rise of Skywalker rant. Yeah, yeah, I really like that one. It was hilarious. It was. It was. So um, now that we've sort of uh, cleared up about objectivity versus subjectivity, I believe so, um, do you want to talk about Floof right now? Maybe we should talk about Ruby first, and then we'll transition into talking about okay. uh, critics, because that, that's a whole just barrel. Okay, I-, I was about to go off on him, but okay. <laughs> Okay, like um, what Yeah Boy Houston said, like it's part of why I can't watch Terminator. The only way that the sequels can happen is through retcons. Yeah, same deal. Yeah, although yeah. it's funny, two gets off on a small retcon because like Terminator, the first one, is very self-contained and it's in a loop in a way because they keep sending back Kyle Reese to get John to be born, and in Terminator Two, it's a timeline where yeah, it, this is where it works out. And the reason why the Terminators continued kind of makes sense because they used technology that wasn't there to increase the rate in which Skynet would take over. And that makes sense. But then it gets all screwy three onward. Yeah. Um, If I remember correctly, didn't they say that Terminator 1 and 2 are basically canon and the rest isn't? Yeah, pretty much. Although 3 is a bit of fun, I won't lie. You only say that because of the breast expansion scene. No, <laughs> no, that's not it. I genuinely <laughs> breast like expansion. The set pieces. We're getting off topic. Let's just continue with the Ruby. Yeah, 
No, not Big Titty Terminator. Oh, yeah. oh that's what we were talking about. Sorry, I was tapped tap, out. Tap, we were talking about Terminator. Yeah, now we're, we have to get back to Ruby. It's funny because uh, it is too uninteresting to talk about. But do you uh, yeah. it, it, It's not that Ruby's uninteresting to talk about. It's that there's so much just... Sorry. Like, it's so insanely ludicrous to talk about that, like, if we were really into it, we'd be here all fucking day, just, like, mm-hmm. pointing out every single fucking thing about it. And like, f- from the actual show, to its production history, to, like, you know, the staff being laid off and shit, it's fucking, like, Kara's mouth not moving in one version of an episode, but in the YouTube version, it does move, but then in the complete compilation, it doesn't move again, and what the fuck was that about? <laughs> Oh, and it gets yeah. worse. It gets worse because it's funny. What I gathered from LJ with that alone is that Rooster Teeth, when they made the complete versions, they didn't use the ones from YouTube. They used the ones from their personal archives, I'm guessing. From the original. Yeah, releases. from their website. Exactly. Because they can't which archive like, that. Which, yeah, like you said, like they archived the shittier version and not the better version. But, like, it's, why would it's you strange. Do that? Like, I assume they did it because, like, you know, in case one of their co-workers was, like, fucking up, they would, like, use that, you know, as a joke or, like, blackmail or some shit. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> out of laziness. Out of that, or they just didn't have it available at the time when making it. But honestly, it's no excuse, because at this point, they've had, what was it, five years? Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it was exactly five years since that episode was released on YouTube. One job. They couldn't even do it. Because they got the money to hire editors to make it look better. And in fact, they could probably fix some of the transition issues from Volume 1 easily. And I'm pretty sure fans of Ruby have made episode, it's not episode Volume 1 much easier to watch through editing alone. Haven't seen it, but I imagine they've already done it before it got taken down or something. I don't know. You know, I will say, like, rewatching Volumes 1 and 2, they were a lot better than I thought they were the first time watching it. Like, I don't know if I just lowered my standards that much, but, like, I really liked the dialogue. Like, the worst part of it all was the animation, in my opinion. Like, Mm -hmm. I really liked the dialogue. The, The music, of course, was a... They were all bangers. Like, the music doesn't get fucking repetitive and stupid until Volume 5. Uh, yeah. They also kind of uh, use it in weird places. Yeah, uh, the characters were serviceable, you know, for a first season, so that's Yeah, because it's their first outing. Oh, and your boy Houston brings up a good point. Don't forget, plus five years, and they're making spin-off stuff and in pre-production right now, and they can't get their animation or story right at all. <sighs> yeah. Uh, one managed. thing I also oh sorry. One thing that's also been pointed out by Ruby also is from especially from Volume Five is how exposition heavy the show became. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Just... That made three the most insufferable thing to sit through almost. It tried to justify its bullshit and made it worse than it needed to be. Well, well, the thing with three was uh, the the problem happened when we when Monty dies, because be- before, because Volume 1 and 2 were mostly, like, uh, fight, fight he- he- heavy vol- volumes. They Th- were. Had, yeah. Th- those, yeah. And, and those, those fights fine. were pretty pretty well done, pretty creative. And then, and then you get to Volume 3, and the fights look awful, and so, and so you're drawn, and so your attention is just drawn more or to this, and the story itself of this poorly Yeah, because right, in Volume 1, because in Volume 3, Episode 1, I believe, uh, they put a lot of reaction shots in the first fight scene of Volume 3, if I remember correctly. Just so many reaction shots with just characters looking around, not doing anything. Okay, like, on top of that, I know Fat Man Falling has, like, a really questionable reputation, but, like, in his Volume 3 review, he pointed... The whole first part of that review was him pointing out how bullshit, like, the first tournament fight was. And, like, yeah. he, he makes a lot of good points there, so, like, I... I recommend. I highly recommend out. his volume three review. I, I I think that's probably him at his best. Yeah, definitely. No, he's not. Like, it's kind of hard to like get a 
pinpoint on Fat Man because like sometimes he's good, sometimes he's just eh. I think he yeah. reflects H Bomber yeah. guy's quality of videos. I, I, mean, yeah, I think that's a good comparison. His editing is really fun to watch. It's just his opinions are kind of digi bro ish. Which oh, and is it gets worse. Because he, cause he, follows, he follows his. He, he follows yeah, his exactly. Bro, so. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching digi bro uh, back in the day. But then I started uh, doing information about like his reputation, um, his history, and everything. And yeah, I, I can definitely see why Fat Man has, uh, was inspired by him, yeah. I, I'm, well, they're both fat and have slightly higher pitched voices than normal males, so yeah. That and um, the beards. Another, another yeah. thing about Fat Man I noticed is how he tries to get the appearance of your movie sucks uh, as well. Like he's trying to nail down the look of him. Yeah, I've noticed that. I, yeah, thinking about it, I can see the similarities. Yeah, it's something I noticed. I haven't seen much of your movie Sucks, so I don't have an opinion on that. Yeah, I, I've seen... I've seen a few of his seen, videos, it, it, and just thinking back to them. Yeah, I can see the similarities. Yeah, so um, what I was saying was how... Um, I think we can all agree that Volume 5 was the worst volume, right? Everyone oh, agrees. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> that is, there's no question. It's funny. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, yeah. It's funny. Everyone, the people who hate the fandom, who love the fandom, and those who are neutral to, like, Ruby in general, can agree that 5 is objectively worse, and that everyone just agrees that it's a cesspool of mistakes. Mm-hmm. I made a whole rant about that, like, after it came out. Let me see if I can find it. Like, I have it in my... Hold up. Did I save it on here? Uh... I, I, I only watched Volume 5 through uh, uh, the Frostbite reactions. So, yeah, that's the only yeah. way you'll make it digestible. That, yeah. yeah, I, I mean, I, tr- I tried after, after episode 11, tried to watch episode 12, got a minute in before I was, I was, I was just disgusted. Oh yeah. By uh, just how bad the animation was, how how bad the fight was going, how just just how poor poorly done the right writing and characterization and shit was. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Like the- they don't even have Veronica Taylor <laughs> as Salem. They have some Jessica Negri doing it. Oh yeah, yeah. Tinder. No. Yeah. Oh, well, Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jen Taylor is uh, the voice of yeah. Cortana. Yeah, they replaced her because I think she they couldn't afford her. I'm pretty sure she's still... I, I don't know. Why was Cortana like that? Yeah, that is a good question. I mean, they... they I mean... Huh. Then again, you can hey, I was gonna, I was gonna defend it, but... every day. If you use Windows 10. Yeah. So, um, what I also noticed also in Volume 5 was the teleporting issue, where um, in the last four episodes during like the big fight scene, characters, every frame, pretty much just teleports. Oh, God. Yeah, that's, that's still one of the fuckiest things I've ever witnessed, and it's not no, even because- through the episodes themselves, it's through the Frostbite reaction and uh, Floof's video pointing out just how butt-shit insane they Mm -hmm. had to be with that. It's like, okay, why couldn't they just have two people fight like they used to? Like, it's not that hard. Listen, like, the main problem with that isn't even the teleportation. Like, Like, they were cutting away from the fight multiple times to a point where, like, they skip entire... Like, okay, at one point, they reuse animation from the opening with Ren and Nora fighting Hazel. And, like, yeah. like right after... Ru- yeah, they did it in 3, but, like, wasn't... Well, I didn't... I haven't seen 3 in a while, so I can't really comment on that, but... Fucking... Uh, when Ruby says checkmate and, and that shit, you know, they skip that entire tangent. And, like, oh, yeah, that- the enemy's already defeated. Like what? Uh-huh. The fuck? Yeah, yeah, and the and not only defeated, they're 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 standing in a fucking line and just not just doing like... shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, I remember what, that. What the fuck was that about? 
Yeah, and it just it just cuts to Yang and Raven's conversation, and then as soon as you come back, it's like, oh, Hazel, Mercury, and Emerald, they just stand there in defeat, and it's just like, I don't know, even know how Ruby or Gang could even face against Hazel or all three of them at once. Oh man, it's even dumber when um I think it was the commentary that Fat Man pointed out, like Ruby learning how to hit Mercury, like as a big oh, moment. Uh, learning how to headbutt. That scene only exists to justify Ospin's shitty hand-to-hand combat training. Oh yeah, yeah, the, literally the dumbest plot so, line of. Like okay, yes, in Volume Two, she lost her weapon and she tried to punch a White Fang guard or whatever, and she got her ass beat. But, like, fucking, she doesn't need to know hand-to-hand combat in order to be yeah, a good Yeah, she hunter. doesn't need to know how, 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 how to, like, hit fists. Fuck, she needs to learn how, how to utilize her semblance more. Okay, would it be more practical? Yes. Would it like, be more practical if she learned how, how, how to do hand-to-hand and fighting, utilizing her semblance more often, just bouncing around on the room, making mm-hmm. pot shots and shit? Unless they got a whip. But uh, they just have, have him standing around. Does she activate her semblance? She barely activates her semblance in fucking Battle of Haven. Oh my god. She yeah, just stands no. there swinging her scythe, blocking bullets. Oh yeah, that animation was just awful. Was oh, oh, and she was, she was like swinging it fast enough to like stop all the other bullets. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it, it's just... It's just... It's... It's, it's the worst... Tr- it's a fucking old trope that, you know, the sword swinging, that, uh, swinging your swords and cut, cut bullets in, in midair. But it's not even worth because you're doing it with this, with this staff weapon. Actually, she uses a scythe, which is a gardening tool, and it's done horribly. Yeah, so, it's not, so it's like, how would she blocking bullets, essentially, with the a weapon? The best way to block would be to dodge. You oh, have yeah. super speed! Oh my god, you know, in, in Volume 2, in that same scene, like, she could have easily just ran away from those guards with her semblance, but chooses to fight instead, because she's, like, I, I don't know if I should say the R word, but... Retarded. <laughs> nah, That's you're fine. safe. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, uh, what I also noticed was in Volume 1, uh, during Episode 1, when... <laughs> the oh, the sword-like <laughs> weapon? Up in the air, uh, <laughs> that is a good question. Awesome. She punched, I think, punched or kicked him across the room. So it's like, if she doesn't know how to do hand to hand combat, how'd she do that back in episode one? Oh, yeah, that's that a, is a good question. Because the writers don't know how to write. Actually, they forgot think, how to write and forgot what they established prior and redid it so that they can continue with that. Oh, um, okay. Hold on, that whole. Per- sorry, sorry, yeah. you go, you go. It's okay, it's okay, you go. I was going to say, like, okay, Monty anime, like, trailers by himself, right? He did. Yeah. Okay, so, fucking, you know, that's one thing I will say went with Monty, like, the consistency in, like, the character's fighting style. Like, so Ruby was able to do that little thing in the red trailer, but like, she never does it again afterwards. So, the fuck? Yeah, so, um, if I remember correctly, Rooster Teeth only joined in, uh, during the production of Volume 1. They weren't really there during the trailers. That was all on Monty's part. It was. Because Monty Pryor had, uh, made many, um, works of just, like, using, I think, Final Fantasy characters to animate really super high-tech, uh, fight scenes. Because mm-hmm. that's what he just loved to do. And he learned to do it on his own. Yeah, and... Yeah, Haloid, yeah. Dead Fantasy. Uh, th- those, those were what, what he did before. He was brought on for volume... Well, for Season 8 of RVB. Yeah, he also did the animation of Season 8, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which do you think... But, uh, to go on a tangent, do you think the fight, fight stuff in uh, 8 through 10 of uh, RVV holds up compared to... Uh, you compared to uh, what it does with Ruby? Oh, um, I have seen a bit of Red versus Blue, particularly the later seasons, like you said, eight through ten. 
And I still think the animation holds up. There were a few parts in, in uh, season eight uh, that are a, few, a bit weird, but but uh, that's basically it. The rest of it is okay. Okay. Uh, Houston agrees yeah, with the you there. Yeah, choreography is still good. Yeah, but I also want to talk about, uh, well, the drama surrounding Rooster Teeth, that particularly being Shane's letter. I don't know if you guys know about that. Oh, I read through that. Yeah, um, I do believe some degree of it is a bit exaggerated, but I do th think a lot of it is truthful. Because um, in the, at the end of Volume 2, during the after credit scene, uh, Yang supposedly met Raven. Yeah, but apparently that didn't even happen. Yeah, it's, it's like they excuse it as like a dream sequence, I believe so. Right. And, um, it's like, I, wait, you talk to her? When when she said like like when she, she directly dreaming. spoke to her in her dream quote unquote, but yeah, it's just, just uh, what I also what I also noticed what I if you read through Shane's letter he said that Team Juniper was supposed to meet up with Raven as well in Volume Three. There was originally supposed to be a confrontation there. Oh okay. Yeah, but um, I I guess they just removed Raven from Volume Three. Oh God, that are you talking about the Volume Two retcon shit? Yeah, yeah. with the after credits. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Let's should we even get into that? Because like that's probably the worst thing this show has done besides Bumblebee. Oh oh, by the way, what what about what are you guys' stances on Bumblebee? Actually, it is fucking. It has no ground. I, I, I honestly just half, half don't care about it. Yeah, I'm kind of like, with uh, Thoughtful on that one. You know, my my main issue is the implications it gives. Same. Like, uh, oh, are you in an abusive, straight relationship? Okay, just turn gay with your best friend slash teammate or whatever, who's fucking not much... Who's not much less angrier than your boyfriend? Oh yeah, your and teammate just, who's who whose introduction to the series is her sexually assaulting a man for no reason. <laughs> oh yeah. When you put it that way, absolutely it's true. Oh yeah. And it gets kind of worse too. Like, yeah, like Blake herself is a coward by all accounts, and Yang would have no interest in that aside from being a dom of some sort. Oh god. Listen. Just like uh, imagine some poor individual looking at this ship and thinking, "Wow, I can really look up to, to to these people. Like these are, I want to be like Blake and Yang when I grow. Just like kill my straight boyfriend and dump you fucking stab him to death and then get with my angry best friend." Yeah. The thing about the thing about Adam is that I don't think he was abusive. But I do think that he did, in, to some extent, was manipulative. But I don't think he was abusive. I mean, we didn't see him hurt Blake at all physically throughout the series. And that's it. Like, they're trying to pull off this narrative that he's somehow some sort of... Like, of course Adam's an asshole. But I don't think he's ever physically hurt Blake before their confrontation in Volume 3. Which kind of makes sense, because, like... She ruined some of his plans, and you know that that's warranted. Like that's warranted yeah. for the character to do so. However, what kind of makes it worse is the Adam short they made it for um Adam to make him seem much worse. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it, but I already know. I I, I, don't I, like I have it. I have it, oh it, it actually it actually just puts him in a better light, slightly better light than the rest of the show. It. <laughs> It tr it tries to make make his like descent descent into just evil make make more more sense you know the f the first time he he kills someone is in uh def defense of his leader uh well in defense of Gira and he and he's praised and though he kind of regrets it he gets praised for it from Sienna and and the and the rep and the rest of the White Fang. All right, so I found my rants from like two years ago. It's kind of outdated. Like some things may be misspelled, but like here it is. Yeah, but by, by Scott, you are are you recording the uh, uh, Discord feed here? Yeah, I am. Just... I am. I'm I'm using monitor capture now. Oh, cool. I'll have to edit out like the side, 
just so that um, my friends don't get shown. But otherwise, I got everything down here. Yeah, you can just crop that, yeah. Yeah. Can anyone hear me now? Yeah! Yes, oh, we, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you perfectly oh, now. So, thank God. Yeah. Okay, it, yeah, I, I was driving when I was up there, so everything was going through my truck speaker, which was working fine so far since nobody complained about much. But then, as soon as I took it off, I just put it on my normal phone speaker, it decided to kill everybody's ears, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're fine, yeah. you're fine. You're fine, though, man. Yeah, yeah. but now I, got, now I got my headphones in, so I can, I can listen and talk to my speaker there. Cool. Nice. Thank the Lord. So, uh, I don't know if you've been listening to the conversation, Houston. I don't know if you have. Uh, I, I have, I have. All right, cool. So, um, about Bumblebee, the, the main issue I personally have with it is that, um, what was I going to say? It came out of nowhere because in Volume 6, they had, there was these two different moments where Blake and Yang, they had a moment. You know, in the first episode, they were like, Blake, we're back together. And I want to focus on that. But then, and in the shed, during the Brunswick Farms, Blake uh, was talking to Yang and says, I'll protect you. And then Yang says, what? what? Forget about it. But that never gets addressed again. It just oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. That was honestly the most bipolar shit I've seen out of Yang. That it, made her, it made her seem like Korra from The Legend of Korra. Which yeah. is not good. And to be fair, Korra it... comes from a better place, only for that place to be tearing on the original in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, yes. Well, well, my my big problem with Korra is all of her cunty actions are always from a co- official capacity. So, in my opinion, no matter how much a character is acting like a cunt who's supposedly a good guy, Korra will always be the worst because she always does her stuff with it in a actual official capacity the avatar yeah. and that woman that woman is nearly is quite possibly the worst possible possibly made tv show ever oh it is in her official stuff it's not like she does a lot of crappy stuff as kate kane but at least as batwoman you can have a couple things she oh, does that at least irony helpful. the voice uh, the actress for batwoman is ruby rose yes yes hilarious yeah, yeah, I remember. That's... I remember when Ruby's like the trailers were starting to come up, and I was looking up stuff for Ruby Rose, like the actual character. But then I started oh, yeah, seeing stuff act- with like Ruby Rose, the yeah, actress, the and I was like, "Oh my god, what the yeah. fuck is this? Why am I seeing a bunch of lesbian shit in my YouTube?" <laughs> <laughs> Same. Oh man. Oh, oh. The, by the way, thanks to this debate, my entire YouTube recommended is fucked. What happened? Oops. What's the showing? I watched volumes one, two, and three. And I got some of the most gay shit on the planet. Thanks, guys. Uh, 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 we're sorry, what do you mean? Basically, just like some Yuri videos of just like Blake and Yang and that. Uh, oh, those shitty ass really? fandom videos you mean? Yeah, oh, pretty goodness. much. Oh, that God. and like, I keep getting ads for buying Rooster Teeth merch. Okay. That's why I bought YouTube Premium, because I'm not getting any of that shit. Fuck it. No I would fun. as well if they had it. I just get ad block. I don't yeah. want to use uh, that funny, block. Uh, funny, funny joke. Uh, what do you think is better, Bumblebee or Nar- Naruto and Sasuke? Naruto, 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 Naruto and Sasuke. Sasuke. There, there's, it, there's more no stuff to support. There's more stuff to support it. <laughs> Definitely. What, what's funny is that it skipped those two and went to the next generation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but this is actually it's actually a better way to do it because, like, with Legend of Korra, they have like Mako and. Korra getting together immediately in the first season. That's only because they were doing it to appease the Zutara shippers, which were rabid and, like, they are almost as bad at, as Bumblebee at one Oh, they were. And what's funny is that Mako was actually dating someone before Korra took his pants, dropped him, oh, and took yeah. his girlfriend's pants. Yeah, yeah, that's what one of the things that really ticks me off when people say that Korra's always been, like, this well-rounded character. And this is someone from someone who liked the first season initially. That scene is so horrible when she just ups and sexually assaults him right in front of Bolin. It's crazy. I mean, it I know is. he kissed back, but still, she she just, like, thrust himself on her. He's like, get away. But then he's like, look, man, I'm confused. <laughs> I, I don't want to deal with this crap right now. And then she's like, man, right in my face. Oh, my God damn it, LJ. 
Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I just like I, I was looking I was looking through my feed trying to find, you know, my rant <laughs> and I realized that I posted this before volume six had aired and I was like oh. <laughs> oh, well. Age like <laughs> That did not age well. It did not. <laughs> but, uh, well, apparently, they've been going back on it from what I've been hearing about Volume Seven. But it's even then, it's like they fucked up. They're they're just they're just not doing anything with. It. That's yeah, better no. than doing nothing, honestly. Wait, I, I have another meme for that actually. Well, oh. wait, did I say that wrong? It's better. Th- it's better than doing something with it. I'd rather they just do nothing. Yeah, because it adds nothing to the story, and it actually it detracts from the story in some places. Like I remember people like looking. Actually, I've realized this looking through um some of the video- oh yeah that's right the gay shippers one I I actually helped him with that um one of the yes, things that I, that pissed me off was um I saw this person like upload a video of thirty five seconds. Of um the first interaction Blake had with uh, Blake, I mean Yang had with Blake. I'm sorry. Yang flirting. Oh, yeah. It was Yang flirting? Yeah, Yang flirting <laughs> with Blake in Volume One and in Volume Seven, which wasn't really the case. And I remember seeing this guy's comment like doing some really stupid shit. Aside from like censoring his comment section, um, shit. Ah, bro, this. bro, this same fucking guy, like, come to this on one of his videos. Hold on, let me see if I can. Yeah, it mm-hmm. shouldn't be that far off. It, it's right here. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm about to copy. He's, he's about to. He's about to release it there. Look like good, good, good tw- Twins Inc. I believe his name is. Yeah, I think that's what his name was. <laughs> just, yeah. just read this. Oh, uh, there it. Yeah, I see it. I hate representation. Every character should look identical. How that's the, the same art. That's the same the, argument people pull for Korra. Like people hating Korra is like, God. oh, you, don't, you just want to be like Aang. It's like that's bullshit. How the fuck that's do you bullshit. jump to that conclusion from such a neutral standpoint, man? I don't understand. I don't like this guy wasn't even saying that he hated anything. He just saying asked what the problem yeah. was. Yeah, it's like he said he doesn't need to be diverse. It just needs to be good. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have a good movie full of white people than a bad movie full of black people. Because if anything, that makes black people look worse. I know that kind of sounds racist. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's we're like, we're giving that's you not, the pass. That's not a knock. That's not that, a that, that's not a knock that, on black exploitation films. Like, there's some good that, black. That I'm films. gonna fuck it. Honestly, honestly, the original Avatar: The Last Air has the fucking the best representation. In any cartoon, like you have fucking brown people, you have monks and shit, you have fucking uh, blind people, you have uh, acrobats, hey, you know circus performers. Oh, there's also something I noticed too. There's a Russian in that show. There is. So there's Russians. Yeah, I'm actually uh, in season t- uh, value. Um, actually, in book two of Avatar, actually, right now, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, all of Avatar is good, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, uh, it's like, it's all centering on one type, one part of the world, but it's like, there's so many different things, Koreans, exactly. Japanese, I, Chinese. Yeah, I'm, om- I'm almost towards Book 3, it's really good so far. And I, and it so, gets better. And yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, I, it, it ironically has better representation, yet doesn't have any gay people in it. It's yeah. true. Uh, but don't you remember, they retconned Kyoshi, she's a bisexual woman. <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. Shut the I fuck hate that up. fucking comic. Please. I hate that fucking comic. I learned that from ER, and I just want to kill myself. I heard about it online, and I was like, "Are you shitting me?" It was like, "I saw a screenshot." Oh yeah, you like, should watch the ER video online. later, man. He points out <laughs> yeah. a lot oh. of problems with that, but we should get back to Ruby. Oh, I watched it. Wait, uh, I I finally fucking found thing. Uh, you you brought up uh, all uh uh divert and shit. I, I remember this this fucking quote from this. Breather. Oh fuck off! I, I, <laughs> Parasite has a 100% Korean cast, including male director, just no disabled, no people of color, no LGBT role. So much for Hollywood diversity. Oh, I hope that, I hope that's a fucking. There, joke. There, there's there's so many layers to just how stupid. I hope this, that's a joke. One, this is Korean, just detached from the Hollywood system. 
two, it's not people of color. People of color usually refers to, you know, non-white. So, yeah. no, listen, listen. I've actually seen Parasite. Me and my friend watched it together. It is fucking amazing. I definitely recommend it. It's Korean. Yeah. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah. Yes. I want to check it out. Uh, like, 100% Korean. Dude. It's like, like, they, it's they so good, I, I can't even spoil anything. No else. disabled? Why do you need disabled people in it? They don't need... Because the story doesn't need disabled people. It doesn't need LGBT people. Like, if you want... Uh, listen, if you want to make... If you want to make a story with gay people and shit, that's perfectly fine. But if it's a bad story, it's just going to make those people look worse. In oh, especially when they're written. I have yeah. a perfect analogy for this. You can have your goddamn Lucky Charms. I'm just going to continue eating my Rice Krispies. Thank you. Yes. Applejack. Because <laughs> it's like Lucky Charms has so many different shapes now. And when you look at... um. Rice Krispies, it's been the same for so long, and it stays true. Yeah, like, don't force the gay shit down my throat if you're not going to do it well or in a way that I like. Oh, man. That reminds oh. me, LJ. Something you have yes. to watch later. I was watching the uh, second half of uh, Any Win's um, you know, win count for uh, Rising of the Shield Hero, his second part. And he mentioned how he... Like the show mention, like he showcases how the show does exposition without words, and man, it is flawless. DM it to me. I'll watch it. All right, I'll give it to you after after this. All right. Or do you want it now? I mean, either or is fine. Okay. If you want to give it to me now, it's fine. Sorry to the push funny. That hop for voice actress was comedian Sarah Silverman, record off. Unfortunately, the opportunity never solidified. Oh, um, however, went ahead with building a Neapolitan. Wait. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. This was released too. The years reason ago. why fucking. Oh. The reason why Neo's. It's because I couldn't get Sarah fucking Silverman. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't like Sarah Silverman as much what? as the next guy. Like, she's oh, a solid no. person. You're to- yeah. yeah, but it's just it's such a weird thing to imagine. You're telling me that voice was supposed to come out of this awesome character? Yeah, I guess. Okay, well, now they're saying that she's supposedly voiced by Casey Lee Williams, the singer of, like, every fucking song on the show. Yeah. Like, which I can't, can't she even... I, I think I think uh, it's more a titular role. It's more just runs. Hold on, give me a minute. Maybe she Every does minute. her voice motion capture or something. My 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 guess is that it's just hmm. and uh, and grunts from me. But like Neo doesn't even grunt. She makes no sound. She smiles, but she don't make no sound. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. That's... I, I feel like I should file that on, on the road. Oh, but. come on. She's like... She, how old is she? Like, what? <laughs> She's an adult. She can consent. Non-verbally, of course. <laughs> like 20... Like, I can't even... She's how legal. old is she? She's legal and she's fictitious. There is nothing we can say or do about that. I'm checking the wiki right fucking now. How old is she? She's probably I, I, I love how we only have the character's birthday for uh, Ruby in the show. And, and yet fucking Symphogear has birthdays for every single fucking Yeah, they don't care. They never plan this. Well, well Sim- Symphogear gives a shit about its character. Yeah. I, have you all seen Symphogear at all? No. I heard about it. I heard about it. Watch and I've it seen before. your memes. Yeah. The, the best best explanation for it that the guy that got me into into it uh, described it as uh, musical lesbian Power Rangers. That's the pitch. <laughs> okay, so I will like avoid it like a flame. The wiki doesn't have an edge for Neo. But I think at least that show is going to have more natural lesbians than this thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the ships there are a lot stronger. The, there's no, 
none of it becomes official, so so it's kind of teasing. It's just the character interactions there are just top notch. Okay, so then it's just to, a teasing of the tacos then. Yeah. The funny thing about what I was gonna say earlier was that uh, on the topic of representation, like um, we've all seen the autistic characters in like movies, film, and whatever, and they're always viewed as like the most smartest character in the entire movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, because but they're Rain otherwise Man. socially inept. Just, yeah, the you thing know, is because it's based off of fucking Rain, the Rain Man uh, principle. Because the yeah. the guy Rain Man was based off of was a. Uh, uh, is what's called an idiot savant. He had like yeah. triple autism, but uh, but of course had uh, intelligence in other fields. Yeah, but, but being but, a savant isn't the same as being autistic. Exactly. He he had autism, but he wasn't like the base example of autism. Exactly. You know, I, yeah. you know, it, I really. But I, Hollywood I did not realize sorry. that. So 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 they just. They just, so they just made it a character archetype based itself of just one misrep, just one special case. Yeah. You know, I hate that Parasite does that exact shit where, like, like I, I, don't, I don't even know if I should say this. Like, okay, there's a, there's a son in the movie, and, like, okay. he's... Well, I don't remember if they, like, say that he's autistic, but, like, he has some issues with him. Okay. And, like, it's kind of implied that he knows more than he does, that he's, like, the smartest character. But, you know, it, it's it's difficult to explain. I'm not even going to go into it. But they didn't diagnose him or anything in the movie, did they? No, they did not. Not at all. I, I didn't even notice if he, he was autistic. Yeah. Well, well, recognize it that. I mean, I will say they kind of fake diagnosed him. The girl did, if you remember, Luke. Oh, the little boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Just... yeah, yeah. That's who you're talking about. I thought I thought you were talking about uh, the main brother character. No, 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 not him. The little boy. Yeah, the the, the little boy. That that diagnose. Yeah, no, they they didn't diagnose him with with fucking autism. They diagnosed him with latent schizophrenia. Latent oh, schizophrenia. Yeah. Here's the thing. They were con artists. Okay. Yeah. That that's what the whole movie is about. Just a poor family conning their way in, into a rich person's house. Oh yeah. By by, by like so by like slowly pushing out all all the staff staff workers. Huh. Sounds like well, something I, Hitler did, except with its people. No. Okay. Okay. Back to Ruby. Back to Ruby. Yeah. Well, yeah, they back don't. Back to care. Ruby. Yeah. Back to Ruby. Let's go. Yeah. Let's get that. Back. So the- so so back to like the whole Bumblebee thing. The one, I as much as I don't care about it, I, I have heard a bunch of arguments for it. Probably the strongest thing about it is that uh, is comparing her reactions to uh, Blake's reactions to Yang and that 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 was Sun because it seems there's a much stronger romance between her and Sun than there than there is at all between Blake and Yang. Yeah, I, I took oh, yeah. note of that when like, watching the second volume. It's like, like oh, she actively rushes at, at Sun. She, she, he goes to the dance with Sun. Mm-hmm. Oh, that reminds me. When I was watching volume two with, I think you and uh, LJ. Oh fuck it, that fuck that compilation. Um. Yeah. Um, okay. When we were watching uh, it. Uh, we noticed uh, a blink, a little blink, a blink. The the wink, you mean? Yeah, for, for Yang's oh, yeah. iconic wink to Blake that that can that solidifies Bumblebee as everyone's OTP. Like, oh, you see, yeah. it was then, real the whole time. Oh yeah. That, Not only that, that she beat a flirtation. tired pussy. You you just had to say it like that, didn't you? Yeah, but, the, but then, but then you juxtapose that with a scene, scene with her, 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 and son, and it's much more overt with him. And they're like, "Oh, oh no, that's that's to- totally not the case." What, that and what the heck you're talking about? And here's the thing: in the bleachers, when uh, Blake was watching Son, she blushed at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, that yeah. was what I was pointing. She, she was openly yeah. mm-hmm. blushing. Because, like, oh, he's such a dork. Like she yeah. never, she never yeah. blushed. At- the only time she's ever blushed at Yang was 
volume seven when she was like, "Oh, your hair looks cool" or whatever. Oh no, uh, that's Kurosami flashback. And that's that's ah. after, and that's only after. That, yeah, that's after I, the fact, man. Yeah, and that's after you know volume six with which t- changed direction. Oh my god, I hate this oh. fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Bumblebee single-handedly ruined the show. I'm convinced. It's of funny. It. I mean, you know, yeah, there's other there's other problems, but Bumblebee is the prime factor. No, yeah, yeah. I, I fuck. The fuck writers it. Yeah, considered I... it, and they did it by not speaking to one another. They caved to the fandom. That that's yeah. the they they gave the fandom power. That's their biggest but, fucking problem. They were too considerate. Yeah, yeah. This isn't the only case something like this has happened. Uh. On a separate topic, uh, I don't know if any of you uh, read Bleach manga. I have. Uh, I have. I've read all of it. Yeah, you know how Byakuya was supposed to die, I guess, as not. Oh, right? fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember that. brought him back Thanks to a for no letter. fucking reason, and Byakuya did, Byaki yeah. did fucking nothing for the rest of the year. Yeah, because um, he, uh, Kubo was sent death threats about his manga and if he didn't bring back Byakuya, and he had to, yeah. See, see this is why yeah, I'm yeah. so worried about Horikoshi right now. Because, like, you know, after all the World War II name shit and the fascist birthday oh, yeah, shit, that. like, I'm afraid, like, what's going to happen to the series? Like, what's he, what's he going to do? Because um, this arc we're in right now in the manga is, like, it's, it's said to be, like, the biggest one so far. So, like, yeah. I'm just, I don't want it to end badly. Uh, oh, yeah, I should give you some good news, uh, LJ. Uh, after boy. the fixes in a few, like, weeks or so, uh, it's back in China now. My my hero Academia is. Yeah, yeah, it's back in China now. It's fucking awesome. Not like they'll have much time to enjoy it, though. At least if you're in the Wuhan area. Yeah, fucking yeah. horror coaching My Hero Academia. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they're able to enjoy. It. Yeah, listen, just do not ever give your fans power unless it's the Sonic movie, because the Sonic movie oh. needed it. Oh yeah, definitely. I yeah, they were. Yeah. Movie. That was the right decent. kind of consideration, though. Like they wanted feedback, and they got it. Now that's different mm-hmm. from what happened to Ruby, where Ruby got hijacked like a parasite. They just bamboozled, yeah. not bamboozled. They just barged. Uh, actually, they just leached on the show, and wanted something good out of it because Yuri and Ice was airing. I mean, it's honestly just the fact that the. Sh- I'm so, I can't believe a show even fucking brought in. I, I can't. I can't believe a show appeals to these kind of people at all. It's well, just, honestly, I think it, I think it's just kind of sickening that those type of people oh, they're just, the ones being pandered. I just remembered why just, it's like, so appealing I to them. LJ. See... They treat the gay like, like fashion. Don't... Think about it. Many oh, have said that do, Blake they? and Yang are an item, mm. a fashion piece, something to oh, wear. Oh, 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 wait, I, I, I just want to make—I just want to make sure we were talking about objectivity and subjectivity before. I just want to make sure, like, we're still being consistent with that. All times stamp. Like, I mean, like, can we agree that a bumblebee is objectively the worst thing to happen to the show? Because I can explain why it is. Yes. Yeah, no. definitely, definitely from its execution and scene oh, so, by scene. You could argue analysis. it. Look, I think it's the worst thing that happened to the show. I just don't think objectively it's the worst thing that happened to the show. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't. I think the worst thing that happened to the story. I don't care as much for like the anime. Uh, let thoughtful. Worst thing, the worst thing that happened to the show was Volume Five. Just oh yeah, definitely. all the poor writing decisions, not not mm-hmm. only leading up to it, but in it itself. You know what? You know what? I'll do you. I'll do you one. I, I can't come up with a good comeback to that. I'll just say this: um, Volume Five didn't destroy two character arcs. It destroyed every character arc. Well, it it makes wow. It makes Flake look like an idiot. Yes, it, make, it does. It it makes Oz. It makes Cinder look like an idiot. It makes it makes everyone. Uh, let's look see like who idiot. who else looks like an idiot. Everyone. Everyone, honestly. It's just just very going degrees. Detail about volume five. You know, the I thing for, about I the forgot thing how about bad volume five. Sorry, sorry, you go. It's okay. 
the thing about Cinder is that ever since Volume 3, she's always been either injured or constantly fails at her missions. I don't know if this is something done on purpose or not, but, like, she constantly fails at everything she does. She, th- I can't take her villain seriously. Yeah, yeah. fail to get to Winter it's, it's less, power. It's, it's, it's less her constant failures, which there, there are successes of her. Like, for, for example, her killing Pyrrha, you know, getting this, the, fu- the fucking maiden powers... And she yeah. did succeed. She did succeed in taking down uh, the whole vital festival, despite how stu- stupidly set up it was. Very. Listen, listen, listen. I was the, the fine. problem. The problem. Okay, I'll let I'll let him go. Oh no, sorry. Like, like I was just clearing my throat. If you want to go, you go. Okay. The the problem with Cinder is we do not have a character behind her. We don't know what the heck does she want? What is, what's her backstory? Who, who is she and why should I care? Okay, listen. Mm-hmm. I was completely fine with her surviving volume because, you know, her injury and shit and, like, what that did to her as a character or lack thereof. <laughs> but, like, that could lead to some, you know, cool development with her. Like, she could learn to be a better villain from her experience. But no, she just became worse. And then she fucking died again, and then came back because fuck you. And, <laughs> and then she kind of died again in Volume Seven with Silver Eye shit, but that just didn't fucking work. And she's alive again, and now she has the relic. But like, and that, there are some implications that Neo's like gonna, you know, um, b- betray her next volume because you know we saw her like being done with her shit. But, like, fucking... How is she going to do it? Cinder just gets worse and worse and time goes on. Oh, it does. The fire thought keeps breathing. The thing is, though, even if they were to give Cinder her backstory, it's already too late. We're already eight volumes in, and we don't know anything about her. And, and like, get... Yeah, that's the big problem with the story. It's too late to do anything. This yeah. shit should have been set up, like, early... In, in the first four volumes, I'd say. Yeah. Ma- exactly. Maybe in volume five, what would have done. Ma- or you, oh, that reminds me, actually. Uh, I made this comparison with LJ. Um, Cinder is basically Sosuke Aizen, but there's no planning or preparation for it. Sosuke you know, Yeah. Because, like... From, from, from Bleach, from Bleach. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, show I don't care about. Yeah, let me get through that for a brief <laughs> second. So, I mean, Bleach, Eisen was disgustingly overpowered. Cinder is Oh, just, absolutely. Like, Cinder oh, isn't, God. so. Except, Eisen was given the backstory and the preparation to show how he did it and why he did it. Mm-hmm. Well. And we got a conclusion out of that. We will never see a conclusion out of Cinder. Or any character. I'm unless like, you're dead. You know, it's sad because any backstory we do get of Cinder, it's not... There are no implications of anything else with her character. So, like, any backstory she gets, like, it's not going to make as, as much sense but if there are any implications. It's funny. If you get what I'm saying. It's funny. Cinder has given more backstory to Emerald and Mercury than she has herself. <laughs> like, the backstory we did get of, of was yeah. just her recruiting Neptune... Mercury and Emerald. Oh. These names are fucking retarded. What's this? Bumblebee oh. fans be like, look at that, they're in love. Son and Blake are just friends. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I never understood that. that. Yeah, I, I was like, this was what I was thinking about or, 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 or in comparison, yeah. Yeah. That's what really like, comes to mind. Did, didn't Blake, like, kiss Son on the cheek at the end, or at the beginning of Volume 6? Yeah, yeah, she did. she did. Yeah, that's right there. That's more fucking intimate couple shit than she's done with yet. Ah, you know, they crap. Co- they co- what? Uh, what I was going to say was, uh, you know, Blake, Son, and uh, Yang could just do a threesome. Yeah, here, here, like, here's the thing. Oh, God. Like, it's a joke. So, it, and I'm, I'm going to be serious here. Son, son is too good for fucking Blake. Just I, I, I've heard a lot she, of she, like she, 
this this guy is loyal as fuck. Volume four. He he is the he is the one that comes on the spot. I just stand behind him. I and uh, Blake. His literal first and scene. He gets abused, and he gets abused for it. Bro, his literal first scene in the whole show was him winking at Blake. What does that mm-hmm. say? <laughs> yeah. He yeah, establishes yeah, I, dominance, and yet he, immediately. Gets, he gets his love stolen <laughs> not, not by a banana. Well, not oh. only that, um, and, the, and, and after uh, Yang gets, not Yang, Blake is outed as a faunist, like the first person she goes to, son. Well, yeah. not really. Not not really she, about what they're gonna do. She outs herself. She's not really out, but okay. But well, y- you know what? I mean. Yeah, because right, 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 right. it's like when Blake goes to someone to deal with her um, problems, she goes to someone she can relate to, someone that she becomes intimately familiar with, son, who has yeah. a tail, and who can relate to her much more than Yang can, because Yang. She's a clod by all definitions. I mean, okay, like the most significant scene with Blake and Yang was just, you know, the iconic bumblebee scene with Yang telling Blake her backstory and her trying to get her to fucking calm down from her keeping an eye on the white fang and shit. Like, Even that was though... just, uh, like, back in volume two, that was just a friend trying to calm down another friend because yeah, they cared like helping, about that friend. Like helping your teammate out, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Wasn't, it wasn't a horny bitch trying to get into a cat's fucking Pants. cooter. Into a pussy's pussy. A, pus- a pussy's pussy, yeah. Yeah. They tried to spread that taco sauce. Uh, technically speaking, does that make Sun a simp now? Oh, I don't fuck. know. I don't... Oh, man, no. Oh, man. I don't yeah. even know what the definition of simp is at this point, <laughs> Actually, so I, I can't. A, 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 simp, is a simp a simp. A, a simp is, a simp. is somebody I mean, who puts emails on, well, Jean is, a, Jean is a simp that ignored a fucking easy target. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is fucking... <laughs> oh, my God. And it's funny. Jean being a simp gave more character to Pira than we give her credit. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's her fucking true. character is just tied to John. Well, well then, I mean, okay, well, wait. I, that... I wrote this down. I wrote this down. Hold up. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want to say your thing, go ahead. Yeah, what I was gonna say was that uh, not only is John a simp, but that technically does that also make uh, Pura a simp too because she was in love with John. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> but oh, here's no, the listen, deal, listen. though. Here's the deal. So it isn't shown, but it is very clearly said that Pura. She has the attention from everyone. Like she's treated very highly, and in fact, she got in very mm-hmm. easily into um the academy, uh, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait, like hold Beacon, on. Okay, she I'm... got into Beacon Wait. very easily through recommendations and her prowess, and that she was very talented. And yet, everyone would treat her like she was very high and mighty when that's not what she wanted out of friends. She just wanted someone who would treat her normally. Yes. If I wait, bro, I wrote this. I wrote her entire speech down. Let me read it for you guys. In volume two, at the dance, she says this I've been blessed with incredible talents and opportunities. I'm constantly surrounded by love and praise, but when you're placed on a pedestal like that for so long, you become separate from the people that put you there in the first place. Everyone assumes that I'm too good for them, that I'm on a level they simply can't attain. It's become impossible to form any sort of meaningful relationship with people. That's what I like about you, referring to Jean. When we met, you didn't even know my name. You treated me just like anyone else, and thanks to you, I've made friendships that will last a lifetime, which wasn't really shown in the show. I guess you're the kind of guy I wish I was here with, someone who just saw me for me. Which, like, I hated how Jean didn't get that she wanted Fuck him at How did he point, fucking not go? At the least most dense they kissed. In the show. At least they kissed. I'll be they a pyramid when, move. Right before she fucking died, so it doesn't yeah. count. Right, oh, right before she me. committed suicide. That reminds <laughs> me. John, the fucking idiot, calls Weiss, someone he still has feelings for, apparently. Oh, um, my God. Confusedly, oh my God. calls That's Weiss a... to get Ruby to help save her. And out of emotional frustration, breaks his fucking phone. 
Yeah. <laughs> Listen, wait, oh, yeah. wait. I'm, I'm remembering the fucking bit from uh, the V3 review Fat Man did uh, of the characters just trying to out to out stupid each other. You know that. <laughs> wait, Luke, hold on. Yeah. Okay, so do John, do John and Pyrrha get together in Lost Road? Please tell me they do. No, no, it's pretty much how how, how it happens in the show. Oh fuck. fuck everything then. I'm not reading that fucking fan fiction now. Yeah, well, well, he's less less of an edgy dick in, in this. I I plan to at least I hope. All right, well that's good. Wait, 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 wait! You you said Lost Rose? Yeah. Well, the oh, fan I, th- I thought you were talking about the the uh, the other thing I was working. On. No, no, no. They they don't get together. Actually, that's the whole thing. That. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I'll, I'll explain it to you later. Uh, okay. I actually, I'll just DM you. Right? Yeah, that's yeah DM. The thing about uh, the relationship between John and Pura is that John only ever really cared about Pura, like after she passed away from Valiant, in Valiant Three. Well, I, I, I mean, okay, that could be a message of you don't know what you have until it's gone, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, true, but I'm, I mean, that's yeah. very true, but I mean, like, it's very strange about, uh, like, if you, like, you, like you said, he was very dense in Volume 2 when literally, Kira is literally saying, I love you, John, and he didn't get the memo. Listen, listen, I would, you know, I would be okay with this slightly more if Jean didn't have seven fucking sisters, like he should have known what a woman does when she's and, into and how a they man. Function, yeah. What the fuck is wrong? Was he just, did he just stay, was he secluded from his family? Oh, and it gets worse. Around? It gets worse. His sister, one of his sisters, is a lesbian, a very happy lesbian who was married oh, and yeah, adopted. No, no. Well, that wasn't planned for until volume six, so it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And uh, one of the things I also talked with Scott about uh, before was that uh, uh, John's sister and uh, what was her name, Terracotta, their kid, we don't know if that's Terracotta's kid or it's an adopted baby. Uh, it's, or, it's, it's probably an adopted baby or, or, or it's an artificial insem- insemination uh, shit. I mean, obviously. Or it was like, donated. Obviously, the black lady got a sperm donor and she had the baby. Whitely just stood by and watched, I guess. Either that or it's an Oscar clone. Yes, yeah, sorry that I'm using... <laughs> sorry that I'm using colors, I just don't know their names. Yeah, that's Yeah, fine. that's okay. Nobody yeah, remembers yeah, like, them. Wait, that, does the World of Remnant have uh, uh, sperm banks? And uh, insemination labs? Why, they why don't wouldn't they, honestly? I, they I, don't, I, I, but I, they I did it the old-fashioned way. Forward. Kira tries to kill Ruby because she was getting too close to Jean. Yeah, that, that, that's that's that's, that's what, I, what I was saying. And they become a thing, and Pira yeah. just goes fucking insane. What the fuck happens to Pira after that? Well, well, she she starts playing. So Lost Rose, Pira starts pl- planning to kill Yang, but just before that happens, Ruby shows back up, gets her revenge, and 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 fucking Pira gets lost. I don't, I don't like this version of Pyrrha. What the fuck? It, it's <laughs> fucking great. You made her a yandere. It, 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 it's, it's the most fantastic shit I have ever, I have ever seen. Anyways, we have to get to the official stuff, not the fan fiction. Yeah, I, I, I I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, all right, yeah. Blame, blame LJ here. He brought it up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, just, I was fine, reading. Man. I was like, you're, what the? Fuck? You're like a Before void, man. You bring point. everything in. You're fine. I read that. And I was like, what the f- well, before, before we leave this point, I was actually one of the few people who shipped John and Ruby at first because they were both the socially awkward people. And I was like, yeah. That. Well. And it, 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 there's more stuff to support that I, because they're I'm all right with. Stuff. Yeah, I'm all right with Lancaster. I, I, I in, in show, I, I, I think, I, I, I personally like, like White, White Rose, but I'm fine with Lancaster and it's probably more developed. Then uh, White Rose. I don't get it. White Rose. I don't get it. L- L- Listen, and, wait. And, and on top of that, that, fucking yeah. Rose Garden is pro- is pro- probably what that they're gonna go with of anything. Uh, Listen. Penny and the Robot. Garden? I mean, no, no, Ruby and no, Robot. no, Ruby and Oscar. Nuts and Oscar, Dolce. Oscar. Oh, Listen, that. listen. 
doesn't look like that's going to happen Listen, after watching I'm Volume sure 7. Oscar. It, is it like Maybe Ruby is just asexual. I hate that. that I actually, this is something stupid. From Volume 3, um, Penny's assistant says that she is uh, ambiguous. Status ambiguous. Stat, 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 status oh. questionable. Yeah, questionable. Is, that that's that's not referring to her sexuality like at all. That's I, I think that's I, her status as a, as leader of the team or or some shit. Oh wait, hold on. I just want to reel back for a sec. Um, Jean looks way too much like so him getting with Ruby will just be the exact same as Tai Yang and Summer Rose. So I do not want Lancaster to happen. Yeah, I can uh, see why. Uh, Honestly, I'd be better with Ruby just dying on her own. That's depressing, but yeah, it'd be better. <laughs> because like, just be a maiden, kind of or just be a maiden and kick ass somewhere else. I don't know. Are you fucking kidding me, Luke? <laughs> I what? hate what is it? fucking it, this I, I, I just plan. DM'd him a spoiler for one of my projects. Oh, okay, we never mind. Up. Don't post that here. I fucking hate this planet, man. <laughs> this world is imperfect. We, we, I'm we guessing this is what Raymond felt when people read his book for the first time. We live in a fucking society after that, man. I just, yeah. <laughs> that, that. Downward spiral, my friend. But anyways, back to Ruby. Um, no, it's almost, yes, it's almost I, as ludicrous as Oscar just accepting Ospin into his head in Volume 4. Like, we don't even get a scene of him like, yeah. okay, I accept this. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, Oscar is just so yeah. insane and in just, just how his arc constantly gets skipped. <laughs> Oh, it gets better. It does. The whole thing is bullshit. You know what's like, funny? They don't even set it up right. I, we don't even know <laughs> what the hell happened to Austin at all. He just turns into a fucking uh, force ghost. He's slowly becoming Oscar. That's the thing. Actually, in Volume Seven, he accepts his fate as Ospin. No, no, no. That's vol Volume Six. It is that day says. That it's, it's it's after he comes back from being missing for one fucking episode. Oh my god! And went shop. And then and, and he's like, he, he goes missing, comes back, gets a new outfit to say, yeah, yeah, I've come to ter terms it's with the fact green. that I'm gonna lo gonna lo lose all, all all sense of self in in, in a couple of years. Listen, listen, Just, like, no, like, it's been okay. rapidly sped up in in volume seven where. Basically, Oscar gets fucking shot by James. Because like he said, like he called worst. him James and not General. He got shot, falls uh, to his near uh, death, and then <laughs> uses one of his powers. While having an inner monologue. We, we, we need to rename Os Oscar Ryan and rename the show Os uh, Ryan's Babe. Oh my fucking fuck. What? Do you guys not know what Ryan's Babe is? I don't. Honestly. You 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 need to watch the fucking red red letter media review of it. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'll, I'll, no. I'll pull it off. Yeah, just me. just it's it's one of those it's just one of those incoherent films that that just gets crazier and crazier by the fucking minute. So like the room. Yeah, it, it it's what? basically the Canadian room. Oh, that actually makes more sense. As a Canadian, oh, I can relate. <laughs> so back to Ruby. Um, back to Ruby, yes. Let's see. Uh, what was Ren, and was Ren and Nora have fucking nothing to do in this show anymore. Like, they, they yeah. kissed in Volume 7. But like, they kissed like, in Volume Ren 7? Ren finished his arc in Volume 4, and Nora just doesn't fucking have an arc. Except for being Ren's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> they, they at least uh, gave her a little bit of stuff in volume 4 but that's it not even well okay yeah a little, like it was mostly focused on Ren not even just Nora just just Ren yeah, yeah. Ren is an empty character he, he is now at least in volume 4 he had something to work yeah. oh okay so he nutted and became empty yep <laughs> you know in fact yeah, they, they, yeah I think that's the best best way to describe his character arc that season basically no, killed Oki. Actually, wait, hold on. Like, Ren's arc is actually set up in volume two with a throwaway line of Jean saying, 
Ren will visit that village another time. That was when they were about to go to Team Ruby to, you know, help them fight all those Grimm in Times Square or whatever. Yeah. It's like, probably not. It's probably not Kira or Yuri because that that's been banned for literally years. What other village is there? I'm I'm pro- probably guessing that it's not not just. It's probably just him. Uh, want want to go pre- prevent that tragedy from happening again to another village. I don't see how you could see it that way, but okay. They never show this shit, that, so it's probably irrelevant. I, I'm I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm trying to find good things about this show. Okay. I I, I mean there there are there are good things. Like, I I, th- I think we pointed out that whole uh Weiss and Blake Blake talk scene uh uh in the first part of the finale, volume one. Yeah, I I I, 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 I think that was like fan, probably the show at its finest, but at its finest. At least story wise, because because it didn't just wise a caricature, uh, ra- racist racist rich pampered person. It actually gave, gave her a, a reason to to you know hate the faunus, a re- reason to to be hateful of, of, of the white fang. Because you know they they've, they've been uh, they not only messing with businesses but targeting her fa- family. And you know, yeah. and apparently family friends and shit. So yeah. she's probably lost a co- so she's probably lost a couple of childhood friends because of these guys. Yeah, so, it's, it's just too bad that that arc was rushed. It's so and it gets sad. worse in seven. Like it okay, gets Weiss much is much worse in seven. In in my in my opinion, Weiss is the best written character in the show, but all of her arcs are rushed as fuck. Actually, so what does that say about the rest of the show? LJ, would I'd, I'd Kira be the best written one? For, uh... Well, <coughs> I mean, well, yeah, Weiss the most and... consistently written one. Kira's the most consistent. Uh, okay, Kira Weiss remains and Kira. not only consistent, but throughout volumes two and three, and I guess one to a degree, she has resonated with me, and to see her die kind of sucked. But it was fitting, because she accepted Just... her destiny and died. You know, if if Pira fucking comes back in a later volume, she came back in the big titty statue. Listen, yeah. if that happens, if they stoop that, but like, I'm dropping the fucking show. I'm not even kidding. Like, what else is there left? Well, also remember <laughs> what Raven said back four. in volume five. Back in volume five. Wait, wait. Oh yeah! Oh fuck you! No, no. Uh, wait, want- Salem only people uses people until they're no longer useful. I want that. No, like people have been known to come back from the dead. I, I believe she was referring to Austin, but if it, if it's like you know a more like anyone can come back kind of thing, then it's yeah. It, that, but that's that's it fucking ruin dumb. All tension, it will ruin all stakes essentially. If she if she comes back, it has to be through Force Ghost. I won't accept any other way. Wait, wait, are we talking it's about like, Summer Rose here or? It, it'd be like some Dragon Ball shit with the Pira. Dragon Ball. And how... Oh shit! No, no. Uh, Watch the, no. But what if they do like the Laura Croft thing? Bro? Like, isn't there a thing in the Tomb Raider games where they can bring somebody back to life? Oh hell no! Except what? Pyra got dusted. She ain't coming back. Well, well, maybe maybe it's like a Palpatine thing. Palpatine. It'll be a clone with her memory. <laughs> no! Oh, God damn. <laughs> what the worst like... thing? Actually, it's funny. Fucking hell. It's funny. If she did uh, come back, would that mean she doesn't like Jean anymore? Because Jean would only adore her and give her the same attention that she had been put on prior on a pedestal. If she comes back, just make her a Grim and like have Jean, give Jean an arc that he can work with and like have her like, like, like I, I want you back, but like I don't want you like this or whatever. Just like have some consequences Actually, what about for being you back. abandoned me. How about that one? Um, how did he? No, she abandoned him. What do you yeah. mean? So, oh, uh, by the way, what are you guys' thoughts about Penny having? Just coming back into oh, the story God, with absolutely no consequence whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I knew I knew it was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen because they have that shot in volume three of the scientist who creates Penny reacting to her death. So I was like, I was kind of expecting her to yeah. get back together. 
but that was, uh, oh, that, that was a one time that they had a setup for for, for some, something that. Oh yeah, like, they did set it up. However, that wasn't an issue for me because like she's a fucking robot. Why why wouldn't she be rebuilt? Yeah, yeah. Why, why is but, everyone but, crying crying over, over her if, if they know she's a robot? Can actually do, do they know whether or not she can be rebuilt? That's funny. Well, I Nobody seen, reacted I to the fact that, that she was a robot. It's like, oh shit, Penny's a robot. No one reacted yeah. like that. It was just like, oh, she dead. We sad now. It's like, what the fuck? People would be shocked to see that. Oh <laughs> fuck. What? What? But seriously though, like three PO can op three PO in the Star Wars prequels can operate without a head. You know, without wait, a body. Listen. They operate with his head off. Listen, listen. I find it really funny how you know in Volume Three when Penny got fucked up, everybody reacted yeah. to that, and that attracted a bunch of grim. But in Volume Two, when Roman Torchic was in his fucking up highways and shit with people dying all over the place, that didn't attract like. Every grim on the planet. Oh, that that Fuck whole thing, that whole thing with the grim and like oh how they detect people's bullshit. It's like if they can detect <laughs> yeah. people's fear, then how the hell did they get that that outpost on the outside of Vale? Oh wait, hold on. I would, think I know they why. Be, like, super confident. <laughs> and this is stupid, by the way. I think I know why. What? Cinder broadcasted Penny's death and got everyone spooked. Uh, Whereas the highway, well, it was just the highway. It's very isolated. There's very big distance. But because so everyone was vibing in this one huge area in the sky and on the ground, they came. That That's still at least like a hundred people being like, oh my god, all these people are dead. Like, that would attract something. It, yeah. Like, it, it, if the show followed rules, that would attract something. And mm -hmm. it did. It got a big old bat. Also, like, on another topic, I just want to say how fucking bullshit Penny getting Maiden's powers is. Yeah. Wait, that's, what, say what now? But, like, listen, that's the ending of Volume 7. <laughs> she me, gets oh, fucking Maiden. Uh, allow, me to explain, you... allow me to explain why this is bullshit. First of, all, first of all, she is a robot. And second, she has male fucking aura. It's aura given to her by her father just because she's exactly. a female by design like this has this gives off horrible implications like if you the just, expo the if, expo if you just she's yourself like, as a female does that mean you can get it's like if john Winter and gender and shit would he get maiden powers as well yeah she's the first trans girl. character in the show because she's a robot oh, oh fucking my or mate what the fuck's her name the, she doesn't Harry. matter she's not and and that's like and they had to tell you that on fucking Twitter. Oh god damn it. So Oh yeah, don't get me started. So not at all on essentially in the story. Like this gives off hor this gives off horrible implicate this there, there is an there is an explanation for it. The it's explanation bullshit, I hear is 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 that uh she doesn't get that uh the old maiden doesn't give give her powers. She 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 transfers her aura into Penny. Which is attached to her power. That her made what powers. they tried to do with just, uh, that makes no goddamn sense. Cinder yeah. Did it. Yeah. Wait, so which, like, why did they need the whole machine if they could do it like that? Wait, if, is her semblance like Jean's? In this case? Too. It's just because so like now she has now she has two auras inside of her. And you got oh, you got a. Uh, you got this an old man, and you got a... An old woman. Actually, wait, hold on, hold on. Like, are maiden powers kind of like one for all? In my like, do they get stronger as they're passed on? That? No, they don't. I think that would be kind of cool, actually. But like, No, don't steal any more shit from my hair. I've stolen fucking iconography from the fifth opening and put it in... Volume Seven's opening. In fact, let me pull up the fucking images right now. I uh, I showed him the image. Actually, yeah, no, I brought it up to him and he found them. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, Scott. I forgot to mention that. And another thing, they stole um, she, uh, what was it? Uh, the previous uh, one for all user. Wait, they did. Remember the when of... um, when, yeah, uh, Mercury Ruby had to father. remember her mom. What? When Ruby had to remember her mom, 
And oh, uh, that triggered her silver eyes. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't you remember how many times... Huh? Do you remember how many times uh, she, she's fuck, fucking brought, brought up her, her mother compared to Cody Yang? Your, your mother said those words to me. <laughs> she flashbacks. I, I, I love that scene. It, but but uh, I know how stupid it is. <laughs> so. Um, Luke, I've oh. I've, al- I've already read this fucking. Oh my god! Why are you sending me this? I know. Uh, that totally reminds me. Uh, Yang hasn't had a, a single conversation, uh, talk talk conversation with Ruby ever since Volume Three. Yeah. At at this point, they're they're only pretending to be sisters in my Showing opinion. Showing him they this don't... meme. Yeah, because even though Yang had a few moments back in Valley 1 through 3 where, like, she ditched Ruby to see her friends and everything, she was sort of there with Ruby, you know, talking to her, having conversations, being, a, being like a sister. But it's like, ever since Valley 3, it hasn't been the same. Not only that, she ditched her sister and uncle for her girlfriend that wasn't exactly her girlfriend. Uh, well, well, the show thinks friends, so... That, so. Very Fuck questionable. Uh, this is also brought up a different question, specifically about Aura and Penny. So as we said, Penny gets comes to win her maid. But does that mean that being like transgender in the series means to her Aura? Does it? Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm I'm, I'm oh, not sure. You? I'm not sure if your or if if your Aura is tied to your gender at all. Well, fucking aura makes no sense in the actual show, so I wouldn't be surprised. Like, if that's what they're going for, that's very... And, and quick, quick question. How, how, how... Back, back in the day, right when they had passive aura, how, how, how did they do med- medical checks? Yes. I, I, I know it's Oh, that reminds now. me. Holy I'm shit. I'm guessing that's one of the... Luke, you just uh, yeah. you just reminded me that they had medical staff, and yet at no point do they show how they treat their people. I mean, well, said that aura is supposed to be like your health like bar. What, yeah, health bar, but like also like it slowly heals you over time. Like that's yeah, the halo shield. Essentially, it is. It's kind of weird. It's not explained that well. No, like, yeah. well, Halo is a good example, actually. Because in the show, much later, after 3, they establish how it works, and it shows the exact same fucking effect when your shield breaks in uh, Halo 3. Like, it's the exact same fucking effect, except different colors. That's it. Yeah, yeah, but the problem is when it ties, uh, they they change it so that, A, they, they, they have to be have it active. They they have to act actually concentrate to ha- have aura up, and B, uh, using your semblance strains aura. That that was an original thing in the early in the show. Well, well, also while we're on that Halo point with that aura thing, uh, the whole reason why like Cortana and is like the way she is is because smart AIs are created the human makes part of. Something. Like mixing it in with the AI or like that, it's like you get part of an actual person's intelligence, so you are to be like stuff like that. It's, it's interesting like, that I remember from the books, at least. Okay. Because they they talk they talk about it in Halo Reach, or at least like Cortana's thinking about like how she made it. Is oh, in okay. It. And that's why that's why I'm like in Halo Four when she's freaking out because of her rampancy, she starts saying stuff that's Halsey said before. Well, Halo Reach is like the worst Halo game, so it doesn't count though. I don't know. Reach oh, no, had no, some no, moments. No, no, no. That's the fall of the, the no the fall of Reach. I'm talking about I'm talking about the book, not the game, the fall of Reach. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the book is so much better than the game. God damn, that's an amazing game. <laughs> Okay. Like it's 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 yeah. my, one of my favorite reads of all time. But yeah, that's like much of the lore that's left out of it. and that's why I still have a soft spot for Halo 4 even though the story may not be great and at least it's got moments the crucial parts it, it respects the crucial parts of the canon that have to do with the chief and Cortana 
since the game is literally just about. And then they fuck it up so in just... five. Oh yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Brian Reed. I, I, I that that also reminds me about well, Wolf's video on Halo Five. That was one of my favorite <clears throat> videos he ever did. I wish I had that video again because he has some good stuff about it. Yeah. Okay. So we were having this debate about objective versus subjective and elements in Ruby. So the I, idea I kind of feel that, like we straight away from that. Yeah, we strayed away very quick because it's just not that easy to talk about, I think. Because there are so many other things that are better to talk about. And as LJ mentioned yeah, before, um, Bumblebee as a ship objectively ruined the show to a degree because they... Actually, the relationship itself trampled the plot and got in the they way. very much did. Yeah, because of the focus on on, on the ship, there, there's less, you know, Evan. there's less to the character dy dynamics. It kind of distracts Blake, Blake and Yang from interacting with, with the other girls. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, do you remember the whole election? The what? Wait, Wait, what? Cut out. I you don't... Cut out there, man. Oh, no, no, I'm here. That was weird. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, the election <laughs> volume, that was basically an allegory for the 2016 election. Oh. Uh, and oh, yeah, kind of. Oh. It, yeah, I, 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 could t I could tell what, what Dodie was referring to blatantly. They thought they were making good social commentary with that, but they weren't. Yeah. Yeah, I just found that whole, I just found that whole plot thread just completely pointless. Like fucking... Well, well it, we did get a meme out of it. We got Robin saying, ONLY?! Or whatever. Drugs here, my own. American Horror Story called Season 7 Official Trailer. What's this? I'm, I'm sorry, what Reddit thread? Just watch the first 10 seconds of it. Okay. This is the thing that scares you the most. It is now official. Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I admit Try to that make is it pretty steam funny. That they do. Wait, wait. Yeah, it's really yeah. bad. Did you post my screenshot on the Ruby? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Oh, emergence is really funny. Man, I got oh, emergence. That's what it was called. Oh yeah, emergence, like best comedy. In this thing, just laughing out loud, reading reading through that. Totally, it yeah. totally did not fuck me up emotionally when I was reading it. Totally was oh, yeah. crying by the end of it. So back on Ruby, what do you guys think of Crow's voice change? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's too bad. I, th I think Jason is a de decent replacement. He's, he, he doesn't fill the void completely. But, but. Was that a siren? FBI, yeah, open up. Oh my god. But, oh. but I don't, I don't think he's awful. Uh, okay, how about the crow and clover ship? I, I personally think that's fucking awful. I, I don't, I don't think that it's just shit. Like at all? Yeah, they were just like they, they were just like pals. For it, just like, it, it and it really yeah, an, right. it annoys me. It, it annoys Luca. It annoys, uh, like everyone I know to to to, to watch people like Unicorn you know, get up to oh call you know Clover Steph just an example of queer baiting when you know it's not even trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Is queer baiting. Bumblebee I don't think the they queer baited that. See, I, even Nebula, you know, back in the plush server, was saying, like, I don't know if he was joking or not, but, like, he was all, all for it. You know, Nebula, like, the, the guy. Like, oh, yeah, Princess Nebula, yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. I don't think the people who watch this will know him, or, or, or any of the other people. <coughs> I know him, I've talked with him. they probably don't talk. But, yeah, no, I don't think oh, yeah, anyone who's going to see this will I... know these people. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, like on that note, should we like even get into the Ruby critics by now? Or um, we yeah. Before we do, I forgot. I'd like to because I might be to having. To... Um, my opinion on Crow being changed. Oh, okay, what is that? Boy? I don't think Crow's the same without Vic, because it's just like different energy. Uh, wait, self? Like, what is going on? Yeah, we're we're getting a brief. Yeah, yeah, you okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, just give me a minute. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not you, Houston. So you can unmute. Yeah, you can unmute, buddy. You're fine. But yeah, we should get to the critics now. Yeah. All right, so I guess we should start with Fat Man since he's like the man. Yeah. 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 Well, yes. Was it the first guy who made the? Yeah, yeah, he was like the big, uh, the first one of the group. He was uh, to to get into criticizing. Okay, now look, I personally like. Yeah, his contents is fantastic. Yeah, I like agree. a lot of views are just on point, especially like, volume three. Is volume three? Yeah, it's like I said before. Like a lot of his opinions are like digibos, like they're sort of contrarian, and like, you fucking. You don't understand where he's coming from at times, but like, other than that, like if it's about Ruby, that's what he's talking about. Like it's like what the f Yeah. Yeah, and I, I I did not realize this until, you know, he started going after Molly that he um, uh bizarre quirks to him that that com that come oh, off as at, Hold on, uh, I'll be right back. Um sums up okay there never mind. Okay, the connection thingy is uh, back now. Okay, that was scary. But yeah, but yeah, I remember when the Mauler shit started. I I think was it November. I I had the DM message was when, when when I found out about it. I like immediately DM'd him because I. Uh, that. Ah crap. Let's see. Uh, December 26, 20. That, 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 that was, was when the, Did you I, say that was with the. That, that was when, when I found out about the Mauler shit. Yeah, just, just try, trying to. Sh and, it, and, and even then, I was like, huh, this, this, this doesn't come off real well, old dude. I. I hear this, and he was like, and eh, no. It's the Simon in the car right now, but I'll be Scott, Scott did you uh, are you still recording? Uh something going on? Alright, well I hope you get I hope it doesn't like fuck you up too much. Okay, so Luke, uh, fat man, he has a problem with Molly. You told me. Oh, oh yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go start pull, pulling up. Uh, I should have pulled these up earlier. Like, at the end, fat man was being really irrational, if if I remember correctly. Right. Let's see. Let me go to the fucking top of this page. It's like, like the one time I couldn't even defend him. Yeah, like the, the first one I found. Was uh, uh, t t telling Mahler that he he's making a bad choice, uh, being on YouTube. Like, and and Mahler starts Mahler starts arguing, saying, "Well, uh, people, are, uh, my fans are following me on on, on YouTube. Uh, they'll be able to see my content." And it's like, "Oh, look at this this fuck talking about a subscriber count." And it's like, "Are you fucking?" Yeah, I think I remember that. It was either it was either shortly before or after he started talking about Mahler. Because uh, I didn't really figure out much about what he was doing with Mahler until that evening. So, okay, like, so, like, I, I don't want to talk shit about Fat Man or anything, but, like, you know, he only has, like, what, 11,000 subs right now? Or 
because of it's like he like at the first place he's not even in a place to even criticize Mahler about No that. no no no. I, I, I disagree yeah, with that point. I, I, I use that point against him initially and, I, and now I'm like, no, that that's a true point. Subscriber count doesn't matter. It it, it matters whether he knows Yeah. It's small because big big guy could be a f- and, and and the the little guy I will actually probably know know what he's so that that could. Well, I guess you're you're just seeing the vice yeah. first, yeah. and it's not it's not. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, it's just that in this situation, he was still in the wrong. So yeah, it, it just I looks worse. I would I would not account for, uh, that that being the case. It damages him more because he has has a less. Uh, has a much smaller fan base, and, and so more more likely that it's it's going to backfire on. Yeah, and it's going to be even harder for him to. Yeah, I mean, it does get his na- name out out there, or if uh, he's getting attention on Twitter, fighting um, bigger name YouTubers. But the problem is he's doing it late and making point and uh, make, making up bullshit points, uh, like uh, for for. Example, Claims here that uh, Baller uh, does makes o- only one point it, per hour in his videos. Yeah, that that's a clear fucking lie. A little like I watched his TLJ. Uh, I just rewatched all his TLJ projects while Baller's at work, and like hour, he's like he's got points about he's talking and he's talking about the humor. He's talking about Luke Skywalker. He's talking about he's talking about a lot of things that have to do with TLJ that come from not only the Force Awakens but from the original and the also the meta commentary. So like, there's a lot of stuff he's talking about in all of. Them. I'm honestly, how slow do you have to be to stay on one point for an hour? It's just not even. Yeah, it's like he's not. Look, I'm not the greatest. Speaker. And I try to do what I can to make more than one point do my little response videos. I'm not perfect, I'm not but, but I do I try to do what I can to do, you know, go through what I'm doing and just say, look, it's here and all that type of stuff. And let's that's what you'd be doing. But to just go out there and just go, Hey, he's not making that many points at all, even though he's very demonstrably I just, Yeah. I, they, you have to be working in bad faith to say something like that. That's why so many people had a problem with Jack Saint's video on Yeah, and he was wanting that video to set up a debate, but like you're coming off of such such bad faith arguments. Not saying that there shouldn't be a debate. I'd like there to be a debate between them because Jack I think I'm tired of his all the you know, it's just when you act like that, that's not gonna give you any confidence. And he was, and he also was whining about how Vax was in the chat. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna wait, wait till Pearson finished there, or, or was was gonna wait till I could bring it up. So, Pearson, you want to finish that? Oh uh, no, 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 I was about done. Go ahead. Yeah. Well. Uh, this was after he he released well the video of uh him on uh one, one of the reaction videos to talk about Mahler on uh, the spurring of Raymond. Yeah, this is one one of his worst uh, an example of him at his worst in terms of argumentation quote unquote just making fun of the opposition, but just the the opposition. Not, not that funny. I, I, I guess you could is the word to describe it. The thing, the thing is, what? There's a point here. He's deconstructing it. There's, he's just using this, this as a punchline, as if this is, this makes sense. That this is, and it, and he's just not taking, and it comes off as him not taking uh, the other side serious. He's. Yeah.
Bro, I have the perfect example of that. L- let me pull up a conversation I had with Floof a few months ago. Give me a second. Uh, fucking. What were the yeah, words? I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find my screenshot. I'm on, on Discord. On Discord. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So we're talking about Floof. Uh, is it okay if I talk about my experience with Floof? If that's okay. Okay, so uh, uh, um, I got into Floof, uh, the Floof artist, uh, his YouTube channel with his Volume Five intro uh, parody. And to be honest, I, I still think to this day it's pretty funny. Um, but however, I started to notice some stuff, that being on his Twitter. Like you said, uh, he would take Fat Man's side with the whole Mahler situation. Um, but then I befriended a, a thoughtful pug over here, and I noticed that a thoughtful pug made a tweet saying, oh, you're criticizing an episode of Ruby, but you haven't seen it yet. And he was just saying that, you know. I'm, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, self. You're, you're. Are you blue? Is that you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't. I, I, I did not figure that out. Just. You don't know that's me. So yeah, as I was saying. So what I was saying was, is how, uh, I think I remember correctly. Uh, uh, Luke and uh, Floof Artist had an argument on Twitter, and what I noticed was that Floof called Luke a pedophile. Oh, oh, yeah. I remember, oh, 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 I remember oh, that shit. God, oh, fuck. Yeah. Let, let me pull up those tweets. Let's, let's... Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty fucking slimy. It's out of nowhere, calling uh, someone a this pedophile. Wasn't, this wasn't the only time this happened, by the way. Um, he also called Hero Hay a pedophile as well. He's calling oh, everybody yeah. a pedophile. Floof and Hero Hay have this stupid fucking... Let me... Let me... Yeah. Let me... Yeah, let me... Let me start on that one, because, like, this is the whole thing that caused me to not take Floof so seriously, was that, that this is before any of that bullshit happened before I got blocked by him, but this, like, they're so petty with each other, and I like Hirohei still, but they were getting on to each other because Hirohei is one of those Ruby defenders, quote-unquote, or at least this is when he was still defending Ruby pretty regularly, and he yeah. just hates the Ruby critics, but then Floof is like, if you... If he's Floof just, you know, once again, he just does that normal, thing. at least I'm considering his normal thing, where he's, you know, going after people who don't, who like Ruby and defend it so much. But there's also this thing where, like, he assumes that Hirohei was lying about something in terms of the Vic situation and something having to do with Ruby, but I've never seen him provide any evidence for it at all. And, uh, I did, and the last couple of times I saw them spat, it was just like, why are you two doing that? And it just kind of got on my nerves, so I stopped watching either of their content or just stopped looking at them for a while. This is like, look, I'm not trying to get into this bullshit right now. There's a lot of shit to screenshot here. Sorry, I'm saying so. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. I, I've, been, I've been quiet on this just to repost a conversation that occurred. This, this was probably the most insane thing that I've ever been involved in. Just it's it's a fact. I I'm I'm not sure if it's the fact that he called me a pedophile or if it's the fact that he blocked me first so I could not respond and, and, and point out how, how bullshit that claim was. Okay, that proves that he knew he. Was. Okay, so yeah. oh. and he's specific. Oh, oh, I, oh, I'm not repeating myself. I don't really care. Looking at these things, Luke Free is Luke Free. That's who he was talking about. Was like a person in the EFAT fandom that was harassing people who don't like Mauler. And I remember when we got into our spat because what happened was before I got blocked, he he retweeted something from Fat Man, and it was something having to do with like yeah, trying to start up a discussion, but then Fat Man got blocked by that person. And I said, well, why don't you just act, go, act up and then just debate Mauler's then since, you know, apparently you're so much better than they are. And Okay, that's, and, that's everything. Holy shit. Yeah, and then Floof. I, I should have untagged Floof in retrospect because it wasn't really about Floof. But then Floof, you know, he got that from the Wii tree, and he said, fuck Mauler. And I was like, okay, that's such a good argument. But then he started, I tried to figure out 
what the hell was going on with him. It's like, why do you hate this guy so much? You know, one of the things he said really t got on my nerves was like, if he if he's, thinks everything is objective, then why shouldn't he just go out and make the perfect movie? You know, Mahler said there's like no way to make the objectively perfect. <laughs> you can make an airtight script, but there's still going to be problems because there's more to it than just the script. Like, there's always something that could be messed up. But I was just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And then he said that the EFAT fandom was worse than Bumblebee. And I was like, what? Give me your fucking evidence. Because I told him, like, that's bullshit because so many fandoms have people who go outside the lines. So you need to provide... And I was just like, there's... I haven't seen many EFAPers at all just going around just harassing Then he says, like, well, I'm sorry, Luke Freak's, like, the guy that uh, is a, is the guy who disproves everything that you're saying. It's like, okay, give me some love. He doesn't respond for an hour, and then when I check at the hour mark, the tweet where he mentions Luke Freet is, like, hit. And I, I said, well, what the hell dude? This is bullshit. Uh, and then he blocked me, saying, and that really pissed me off, because he's he wasn't going to because if he's going to call people pedophiles like that and just not provide evidence of why they are, and he doesn't even he doesn't even provide me evidence for something that's just you know just a simple question. It's like show me some evidence of somebody in the EFAT fan who is going around harassing. Yeah. Yes, he and, says and, this a lot. And listen, everything I just posted down, like fluff calls. Like, we were having a different conversation before, but, like, Floof calls me autistic. It was, like, no evidence to support that, so... <laughs> I, I call myself that, autistic. That doesn't mean anything. Well, like, he was doing it in a serious manner, so... I just, uh, it was meant to be taken seriously. It, I, yeah, and then I reply yeah. with, am I really the autist compared to someone who bullies random people for enjoying the show? Like, Ruby sucks, but it's, re it's just retarded to go out of your way to shit on people for simply enjoying it. The, 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 yeah, it's like, I like, like, the thing that drew me to Sloop was like, I liked how he was trolling people. But he, he took it too far. Like, he even yeah, says... he definitely took it too far. He says, I don't bully anyone ex except me. Well, that's supposed to be a joke, but whatever. And then I say, do you want me to pull up Twitter? And then he fucking criticizes me for making empty threats of pulling up shit. Or, well, he says, I, I can't make any points, so I resort to empty threads, and I still wonder why I got banned from the Tundra. Which, let me explain. I got banned from the Tundra because I was being an immature little bitch. Like, that has nothing to do with making empty threats or any points. Yeah. It, then, it, then he says, thanks for adding yourself as the one who's caps say. Like, first of all, that's Luke, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, should we should we censor that so like or Luke, do you want people to know that? No That like did you not hear what I said? I kind so, of, so, so, sorry, I kind of zoned on trying to read through your these uh uh the convo the convo you post. Trying trying to I'll say I was saying that Flu said thanks for outing yourself as the one been doing screens. As the one who's been doing screen caps of anything I say, and I made the joke of, well, that's Luke. Like, sorry if that offended you or anything. The yeah. thing that sucks with Flutes, though, for me, is that I have a video defending him. That's my second most popular video on my channel. It's the only other... I only have two videos on my channel with over a thousand views. And the video where I defend Flu from, like, Barbara and the Bumblebee shippers because of that stupid little... Uh, edit he did where Yang stabs Bl or Blake stabs Yang. I defended him in that video quite vehemently. Do you regret it? I don't regret it because in the context of what was going on, it wasn't Floof was Floof wasn't exactly in the right. He was just doing his normal thing. It was just a joke, and it wasn't even something he made. It was something somebody else made. They were all going on him like he was the one who had already... The, the, the big... Yeah. And he also... Uh, the, the, the one thing that I really fault him for is tagging okay, the cast. He, he tagged the cast in that. And then he got to that argument. 
her, bro. And then she blocked him after that. She blocked him when he's whining about game. So that ended. But yeah, I did. I, like, I don't regret defending him, but I do regret, like, you know, not being one of the people to just go, hey, calm the fuck down a little bit. It's like, but then again, with certain people, no matter what you say, they're not going to. So, I just. So. Oh, wow, that, that, that was a bad cutout. Oh, man. What is happening right now? Uh, can we still hear each other? I can still hear. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Still hear you. So what I was saying was, um, oh, uh, is it okay if I talk? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay, so uh, after I got into his con. Oh, oh boy, you're you're roboting again. It's content. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I can hear. I, I'm like, I will say, like, before you start, like, the point of my conversation with Floof was that, like, he doesn't realize he's in the wrong. Like, he thinks what he's doing is right, and he fucking just shits on people for thinking otherwise. So, that's... He's doing what he accuses other people of doing, basically. Yeah, hypocrisy. He's fucking... Like, I don't want to call him retarded, but he's... He's, he's fucking retarded. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, like... And it, also, I don't like it when he discusses politics because he gets overly judgmental on it. Like, oh. if anyone has, like, and this is why I don't like people like Jack Saint, too. It's like, you could have, probably have a legitimate discussion with him, but he has such a closed minded view on politics that, he, like, when he got on the Mauler. You know, listen, if you specialize in. Six. Oh, you guys got out again. I cannot tell who that was. I said, if you uh -oh. like, if you specialize, if you specialize yeah. in talking about animation, do you even have to write to talk about politics? Because like, it seems that every animation nerd who like gets into all that stuff just is completely wrong about everything. Yeah, it's like, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm some. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm some political expert, but I've been following politics basically. I was years old, and I was watching like run up to the 2008 election on my. I've been following politics for a long time. I'm not an expert. There's stuff I miss the time. And I'm trying to do my best to, like, at least keep myself in I don't like talking about it anymore. But, like, one of the things when I started in my was is I wanted to talk about politics and also be more of, like, an informative thing to talk about, like, real-world events that happened or at least something that happened in the past. I didn't do that much at all. There was one thing where I was trying to make an educational video, but all this stuff back then and it still sucks now I wouldn't really do much with it but when I talk about politics I try to do the best I can to make sure I have the knowledge in my head that to, to go over these issues and that's good you should do that yeah and again I'm wrong I'm not yes definitely because all I use is my freaking phone so I have recording crappy gameplay footage on my phone doesn't really work even do even though my camera's Amazing. Oh, uh, so you're like Leafy is here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was too easy. <laughs> but I, yeah, it's just it's it's just it's just a weird thing that I got because I don't got much. I don't got a lot of period right now. Don't uh. get paid that much. I get paid enough, but it's like I got other things to worry about. So it's like buying a capture yeah. card. Yeah, but buying a capture card and a commitment. Because there's a laptop at work that I ha that's like three hundred dollars, and I'm trying to save up for that. But then buying a capture card and also an extra hundred dollars off of eBay. But I'm trying to figure out how I can just get this all done in a timely manner. Because if I do get a capture card and I get a computer, then I can actually start editing videos in a way I think that would be more satisfying. Than I do now. I mean, I've learned a lot about editing. It's just there's still a lot I gotta learn. Yeah, so it's... 
yeah, it was like, I'm, yeah, was one of the things I'm working on in production now is the uh, discussions about like the games and games and the book, like making a, like hour long videos on. I'm gonna have to use other footage that's not my. I don't see it looking like shit if I'm gonna. Since I don't like you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that reminds me. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to clock out real quick. Uh, how long y'all gonna keep uh, planning? I'll keep doing. But how long are y'all gonna keep uh, planning to keep doing? Because I don't know if I'll be able to come back later if I get an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I gotta leave real quick. But uh. Y'all have a good time with the rest of the stream. Uh, I'll try to put, put some stuff in the chat about like the stuff with my conversation with Flu. Yeah, and my vi I have a video on it if y'all want to watch it. Over recording, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all righty. Well, y'all have a good day. We'll lo would love to do this again soon. All right, this sounds Y'all have a good All right. You too, man. All right. So we're cutting it here, or? Oh, I'm still here. Go ahead. And I got a few points I wanted to touch on, because so we, we, just we just hit here and there. Uh, nothing, just Houston was talking about recording stuff and uh, said he had to leave. Uh, all right. So, like, should we talk about Raymond now? What? Oh my god. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. If, if you ever cower off in an argument, you automatically lose. Like, does it, like, there's no other way to put that. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'll mention this, like, I was talking to somebody on Twitter about Bumblebee. Like, Scott, you liked some of these tweets, so you know what I'm talking about. So, so speak, speaking of Floof, Floof again, there, there's... Uh, I, I, I noticed this uh, a while back, uh, about right after this whole incident went down, and I, and I was doing some research. Uh... It, it seems like Fat Fat Man is probably the biggest enabler for for Floof. Like th this tweet, I this he tweet I have right is. here, I'm pretty sure this is. Uh, he, it wasn't directly quoted, but uh, Floof said when he was like accusing uh, Hirohei of of pedophilia, when he was called out on it. He said that uh, he heard it from Fat Man, and this is a tweet. I think, yeah, it's stupid because a it, it's basic sag accusation here, no no real context. B, uh, he he's getting this information from a bumblebee shipper, and probably the. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and and who and one who is pr pretty much the pr considered the worst of the bumblebee shippers. They 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 seem nice, from from what from my my personal experience. 
with, with him, but uh, from from what everyone else says, he he probably should 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 have hated this person. But but he just believes, yeah. But he just believes what what they said without you know second guess. Yeah, but then, yeah, and then after, uh, then after uh, that, all that shit down, or I, I, I believe it was just just before it, it was around the same time it occurred. Uh, Fat Man released a tweet. I'm gonna have to pull it up. Give me a minute. Trying, trying to fucking find it. There's so uh, much ba- basically him trying to defend. Uh, a flip flu from a bu- bunch of critics say, "Why would anyone on Earth Earth defend flu?" There's so much shit to talk about with flu. Like we're gonna be here all day. Yeah, it's 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 a fa- yeah, and and I remember getting into conversation with uh, media, him saying, "Oh no, everyone fucking hates flu. Flu. There, no no one defends him. Fucking fat man does that like." Fat Man is that is probably the worst thing. That's the thing I'm angriest with Fat Man about. I I, 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 I hate I think I hate him more more than Flu because of this. He 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 it's it's, 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 it's well like that. I mean yeah. well, well that uh, okay. LJ was a group effort. I, I, I believe. Uh, okay, Scott, listen, listen. You were definitely a contributor, and I greatly appreciate you for that. But like, I also and uh, Luca, like, I, not Luca, just Luke. I learned a lot from you too. Like, it was mostly just me realizing I'm a shitty person. Maybe I should stop doing that if I want more friends. And like, you know, well, it's up for debate if I've improved. But like, I feel like I have. Uh, my content, my content is inconsequential in that. But thank you. What, well, like YouTube content or just Discord? Oh, thanks. <laughs> you did. I appreciate that. Okay, off topic. Off topic. You know, I have a theory about Floof that I just came up with. Maybe he's like Bakugo from My Hero Academia, whereas, like, he has a superiority complex on the outside, whereas, you know, he makes fun of everyone, he thinks he's better than everyone, he shits on people just for liking something. But perhaps on the inside, he has an inferiority complex, whereas, you know, like, he knows how fucking... Like, he's really insecure about the shit that he likes and just wants to make himself look like the bigger fish by harassing a bunch of people and, you know, being loud and obnoxious and shit. Yeah, I'll bite and no bark. Or I'll bark and no bite. I think the only, um, what's the word? Um, the only satisfying interaction I've had with Floof is when I made that Ruby Critics meme 
think you all saw it. And like, I had him as the ass and I, I said, sorry, I didn't mean to make you the ass. You're like the last minute, you know, inclusion. And he was perfectly fine. And he was perfect. He actually enjoyed being the And like, yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I didn't mean any ill will towards him when that me, but like, you know, that was the only good interaction I had. So that was cool. Like he has, he's partially a human being in that regard. Whereas he can, he, I'm trying to con tr trying to convince him that what he's doing is reconsider is just impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Luke, and oh, yeah, I, I, I think at the time, false. yeah, Luke, I think at the time that was happening, like, you were yeah, the girl. He, the girl he added, the the person who's involved. There's an incident, but it's nowhere close to what he's implying it to be. She she came. She he added her. She came up of uh and just said, "I don't want to be involved in your her, her crap." Shut the fuck up. <sighs> yeah. Well, it it did by go, going to me and and uh and DMing me saying, "Sorry, but you're an asshole." Essentially. Yeah, that's I I I I did not accept his apology. I I I I just let it slide. Was what was all I did. I, I it, and that is probably my biggest regret of all of this. I I should have said I should have told him no. I'm not gonna set take take an apology. Just this this disingenuous. Yeah, but the thing was, it was a Sunday night. I had classes in the, I had classes in the next day. I did not want want to worry about crap like this anymore. And, and, and it's a heart, and I did not want to bring this up to you know my folks. Uh, if if I plan on you know suing his ass for libel or slander. I feel like film is. I feel like Floof is just an ultimate version of me. If I never change. You know, I could see that, man. Hey. Hey, and yeah, willingly. You know, the thing I, is, he's. Yeah. I, 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 I doubt it with Fat Batman and uh, Floof. Because as much as like Raymond rails against Fat Man for the shit he says about Mahler, he still goes at it from time to time. He, 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 even after, you know, uh, what, what's his name? Fuck, I forgot his name. Not I. Uh, when when and and talked to him about it, and and got him to sh shut up about it until he releases his video, but which is probably not going to be released ever. Yeah. Well. Because that's the that's the big problem with Mueller. You're you're going up up against a guy who is willing to fight fight against since your argument, and and the way that, in the last time that that he tried to you know dis dis Mueller publicly, he he got eviscerated, by by, by Mueller and his friends and even his own fans. It 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 was it it wasn't it wasn't even a close thing. It was just it was just. It's just all in against him, and even then, he's still he's still like go, going to uh, Jack Saint to all, to all these bread tours who 
who hate ballers. Right. If he if he does screen cap them. So what problem was that? I am back. I am so sorry. Oh, are we talking about the the the? Uh, yeah, I, I I wasn't there for that. I I I'll admit. I, I've been starting to drop off EF, EFAP recently. Like, I, I dropped off Frostbite way, way back when, after the mullet, mullet bar shit went hot. And, 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 now, and now, now I'm just, like, fucking tired at this rate of, of, of everything. Yeah, yeah I, I just did not want to do that. Is what it is. I, I at the time I just did not want to do it. Hmm. I mean, I mean <laughs> well, you know, I will say rewatching volumes one and two reminded me on why I enjoyed the show in the first place. Yeah, the bits, the bits I watched with you, they, uh, hmm. they, they did remind me. Yeah, yeah, this show had. Had good moments. It had yeah. potential. It wasn't a complete pile of shit early on. Yeah, for what they were, like ignoring how they age, like they were genuinely fun to watch at times. But like, what the fuck happened? Besides Monty dying and all, what the fuck happened? I get most of all of their notes were provided by Monty, I guess, which makes sense because he made the fucking show. Yeah. Is it? I that was like I didn't even I didn't even focus on that. I honestly didn't even focus on the lighting. Is it not? It wouldn't be the moon. That wouldn't make sense. Is it like some artificial spotlight or something? That that's fucking stupid. I mean, well, it was mainly a ruby and ruby thing. So. I, I, yeah, wasn't here, here much for the debate rather than discussion. I, I'm not great at debating. I, I think I realized that on Twitter. So, so is this it? Like, is this going to be like 
our only meeting or all right and like do we talk about just the exact same shit oh wait a lot i think maybe we should like talk about each individual quality mission weekly thing yeah, yeah just, i just, guess that 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 would have been a better way to format yeah, this. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So next week, let's start with volume one. Let's just only talk about that, and like maybe talk about how it, you know, influences anything else in the show from that forward. I guess. Yeah. Well, if, if we're going to get at this as a series, let's let's name this first episode "Dirty Laundry." You know, just get because because we just got the shit out the window on on this. Yeah. Lucky. Lucky for me, I already watched Volume One, so I don't have to again. <laughs> and and I, I, well, not not necessarily detailed, just like well, I'll I'll link them. I'll link them. I don't know. Oh sh. I had had to edit. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Two and a half hours. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Luke, I said that you were the one who was screen tapping stuff. Are you okay with people knowing that, or do you want that censored? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's pretty obvious from this point on, after the stuff I released. Just, they, they, they should, uh, I, I'm pretty sure anyone with uh, enough brain cells could tell what I'm doing. All right. I, I've I've slowed down recently because you know a uh, fr friend of mine just is tired of the drama, and I and I am kind of a bit too, and so and so I I'm. I'm